Nuclear war, the thing that most people in the modern day assume is the most logical escalation from Twitter war, with Trump tweeting things like, Will someone from his depleted and food-starved regime please inform him that I too have a nuclear button? But it is a much bigger and more powerful one than his, and my button works. Alright, so apparently the US has the bigger button, which is great because when it comes to deciding whether or not to launch a nuclear war, that's when I want Donald Trump to start feeling self-conscious about his hand size. It's even scarier when you see... This is a very ominous looking because of the red button. What does that get you when well, you press the red button? Well, it gets you a Coke. Oh man, that's terrifying. Every time Trump pushes a red button, he gets a Coke? Isn't that how they train rats? You can't immediately escalate to nuclear war either though, that's like proposing on the first date. You're gonna miss all of those magical moments, like your first diplomatic struggles or ground skirmishes. Come on, think about all those battles we'll be missing out on. I don't think the market could handle another Call of Duty game set in space. So you might be wondering, what is this episode about? Well, we hear a lot of news like... And three times. He asked about the use of nuclear weapons. Three times he asked, at one point, if we have them, why can't we use them? That's oh, wow. One now, I've literally had nightmares about this, which may be justified considering I live in one of the most nukable cities, New York. Our city is so nukable they named the Manhattan Project after us. Our city gets destroyed so quickly we don't even outlast the black character in adventure movies. So, what am I talking about today? Well, and this will either put your mind at ease or terrify you even more, but we're going through the history books to look at some other insane US leaders who either ordered or came incredibly close to ordering nuclear strikes, and what caused them not to. Now of course, because we're talking about nuclear strikes that didn't happen, we're going to be skipping Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And because we're only talking about deliberate events, we're not going to be talking about the time we accidentally dropped four hydrogen bombs on Palomares, Andalusia, Spain in 1966. Luckily, they didn't explode, although they did leave a fun legacy of radiation. Or the time we nearly detonated a nuclear bomb over North Carolina. That certainly would have saved North Korea some time and money. No, we're only talking about the times when presidents deliberately tried to nuke countries and were talked out of it. I certainly hope this helps you sleep easier. It did me. So first, we have the Korean War, North Korea's gritty origin story. In 1951, the US was in the third map of the set, having pushed the North Korean invaders back, although everyone knew that China was about to become involved. To keep China away, our Major General MacArthur really wanted to nuke North Korea, specifically, to quote him, to create a sea of irradiated cobalt stretching the border that would prevent the Chinese from even crossing into Korea. Yes, we were going to make Korea untouchable by irradiating its land border with China, said the man who less than a year earlier had struck a decisive blow by launching an amphibious attack on Incheon. So what happened? In his distinguished army career, General MacArthur has known defeat as well as victory. In the Philippines, he came back. From the Japanese, he finally accepted surrender. His Wake Island meeting with President Truman ended with a decoration. Now he is stripped of his commands and the President says why. What would suit the ambitions of the Kremlin better than for our military forces to be committed to a full-scale war with Red China. Now remember, this was President Truman who chose to fire MacArthur. You know, the only president to ever use nuclear weapons in a war when he bombed Japan two times? So it's pretty easy to see how we could have ended up with a sea of irradiated cobalt and one unified democratic Korea that was super pissed off. So this brings us to Vietnam. Now to some, it's no real shocker that the US wanted to drop nuclear bombs on Vietnam. I mean, we dropped almost everything short of that. In 1965, the Joint Chiefs of Staff recommended that we would win the war if we sent 500,000 to a million troops into Vietnam and started nuking targets on the Chinese border. The use of nuclear weapons actually came with the endorsement of ex-president and all-around loved military tactician Dwight Eisenhower. 
This was again at the same time when mainstream politicians like Democratic presidential candidate Barry Goldwater were very publicly advocating for the use of low yield nuclear bombs against North Vietnam with the specific intent to defoliate forests, destroy bridges, roads, and railroad lines. Wow, talk about trying to fix a TV with a sledgehammer. I kind of feel like there might be a better material out there than city destroying nuclear bombs to take out a bridge. Johnson, fearing that if he outright rejected their proposal, the chiefs of staff would resign and go public, gave them the troops they were looking for, but not the nukes. So we had to stick to more acceptable methods of just burning down villages with napalm. Now this brings us to the granddaddy of all presidents terrible at dealing with nuclear weapons, Nixon. If you look into this guy's history, it's hard to believe we're still around. We have f to first talk about the time he got drunk and woke up with a crazy story. Just imagine, oh Kissinger, bro, what did I do last night? Oh man, I can't remember a thing. You tried to nuke North Korea. Now what am I talking about tried to nuke North Korea? That probably sounds like an exaggeration, but here's exactly what happened. In 1969, just after North Korea downed a US spy plane flying over the Sea of Japan, President Nixon got really drunk, and in his stupor he got on the phone with the Joint Chiefs and ordered a tactical nuclear strike on North Korea. Luckily for us all, Henry Kissinger got on the phone with the Joint Chiefs after that and convinced them to wait until the president sobered up in the morning to make the attack, at which point he realized maybe nuking North Korea might not have been the best idea. North Korea isn't seeming too unstable anymore, is it? So this brings us to our buddy Nixon's other big idea. Now I'm not sure anyone has ever said this, but thank god Kissinger was in the room so war crimes didn't happen. Think big. You're planning a war, not buying a birthday present. Maybe think reasonable. Nixon had on many occasions expressed interest in dropping nuclear weapons on Vietnam to defeat the Viet Cong, and some speculate the Chinese. But Kissinger consistently was there to talk him down. So why am I talking about any of this? Well, we've had many moments where presidents were much more determined to use the nuclear option than Trump. And if we didn't use nuclear weapons when Nixon specifically ordered a nuclear strike on North Korea, it's not gonna happen when Trump tweets some dumb stuff out to Kim Jong-un. Thank you, and thank God that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I hope you enjoyed that last video. For more episodes of That's All I Have To Say About That, click here. Please like and subscribe by clicking here. And if you're really a fan, you can join our Facebook group. It's just a party over there.